with our next talk, uh, Making Music with the uh, Web Audio API, Steve Kinney. Uh, seems like a really interesting uh, mix between using hardware and web and JavaScript. Take it away. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Steve. Um, when I was a teenager, I couldn't decide if I wanted to be a musician or a uh, programmer, developer. Uh, so I did the natural thing and uh, became not very good at either one of those. Uh, for a really long time, so I became a New York City teacher, and then eventually, eventually, like, learned how to program. Um, right now, I work at the Cherry School of Software and Design out in Denver, Colorado. What is that? Glad you asked. That is a seven-month developer training program teaching Ruby and JavaScript. So if you are looking to hire junior developers, I have, like, stickers and cards and all sorts of stuff I can just keep handing you. Uh, also, if you're looking to, like, mentor and teach and, like, work with aspiring junior developers, because usually the best way to teach yourself stuff, also come talk to me and I will bribe you with stickers. Cool. Um, just a kind of quick administrivia. Everything that we're going to talk about today, all the different like code samples, all the demos and stuff, live here. And I will show this slide again at the very end. So it all is all there. Uh, so you can, you know, you don't have to like scribble down every uh, morsel of wisdom that I have for you immediately later. So I don't really know how to tell you this, so I'll just say it. Somebody put a synthesizer in your web browser. <laughs> Disclaimer, somebody put a synthesizer in most of your web browsers. <laughs> My apologies to the Opera Mini user. Uh, it takes the form of the Web Audio API. Right? The Web Audio API is a way that we can kind of create sounds in the browser. Right? And if you've ever used like Canvas or any of the other kind of APIs along that kind of like uh, spirit, it all starts with a context. Right? And how do we get our hands on one of these audio contexts? It's pretty easy. Um, most of the time, you do window.audio context, unless you're using Safari, and then you do window.webkit audio context. And once we have an audio context, we can save it to a variable and kind of get everything else that we need out of that one value. And so, in our audio context, we have a few things that we kind of get for free. One is this idea of a destination. For the browser, that destination is your operating system and whatever it does to make sound come out of your speakers or headphones and whatnot, right? And what we'll do is we'll get a bunch of sound sources and we'll connect them to that destination. And the metaphor I like is a guitar, or in this case a guitar, because along the way, we can actually put in some intermediary nodes and begin to like do things to that sound source. We can add reverb, we can add delay, we can add gain. We can do all sorts of fun stuff to that sound before it gets to the context. But first we need a context. So how do we get one of these? Hey, look at that. It's on the context object as a property, just sitting there waiting for us. So the next thing is we need some kind of sound source. And we've got three major options. We can load a sound file. We can use the get user media API to like take over their microphone and pull it in from the user, or we can create this thing called an oscillator. Now, this is a talk on making music with the Web Audio API, so telling you to load a sound file or make it yourself or record it through your microphone seemed a little cheap. So we'll talk about the oscillator. What is an oscillator? An oscillator is a little thing, that's a technical term, and it makes a sound wave, right? And sound waves have amplitude, right, which is like how loud or soft they are, and they've got wavelength, right? The further apart those waves are, the lower pitch it is. The, I can't do a high pitch, so don't, don't break the that. <laughs> uh, the high, you know, closer together they are, the higher pitch it is, right? That's our, that's, that's our science lesson for today. Um, to create an oscillator, context has got you covered again, right? Context has a method called create oscillator, right? And so once we get this oscillator, we have to connect it to our destination, right? And all of our audio nodes have this awesome method called connect. Isn't that convenient? So we take our oscillator, we call the connect method, and we pass in the destination. And now we've wired it up. But our oscillator doesn't do anything out of the box. We actually have to start up our oscillator in order to have it actually make any sounds. So we say oscillator.start. In Firefox and Chrome, you can actually leave out the argument at all, but in Safari, you have to use zero. One of the, and that's when you want it to start, like how far in the future. Like, I usually want it to start now. That's why I told it to do that. Um, but normally, you start playing with the Web Audio API, you're doing it in Chrome or Firefox, you're doing your web 
development, you get really proud, and you want to show your significant other why you haven't talked to them in a while. Uh, so you pull out your phone, you hand it to them, and no sound comes out. Well, it's because you're probably running Safari and you forgot that zero. Pro tip. Um, now, the other kind of first thing that happens is you will inevitably have your speakers too loud, or your headphones too loud, and create way too high of a pitch, and be shrieking in pain as you, like, lose what little hearing you have left. So you're probably going to need to stop this oscillator very quickly. That's hence zero for now. Right? And so we can start an oscillator, we can stop an oscillator. And then, okay, I've, I've changed some things in my code, I want to start it again. Not going to happen. Oscillators are single use. Once you stop an oscillator, that's it. You're done with it. Right? Um, you can leave it there if you like memory leaks. Or you can disconnect it and allow garbage collection to come in and take your oscillator away. But like I mentioned, I personally don't really feel comfortable throwing away oscillators. It seems wasteful to me. So I mentioned before, we can actually put in these intermediary notes, and we can kind of get a sense of like, hey, I want to adjust something about this sound source on its way to the destination. So one of the things we can put in is this thing called a gain node. Right? A gain is basically, just think about it as volume. Right? And we can create it, you guessed it, as a method on the context. Right? We can create a gain node. And then we have our sound source. We have our gain node, and we have our destination. Step one, hook the sound source up to the gain node. Looks familiar. Step two, hook the gain node up to the destination. Again, more of the same. And now, we can start the oscillator, but we can adjust the gain. One is whatever it was normally. Zero is silent. Two is I don't have any respect for my own ears. Right, and so on and so forth. And just like the gain node has some properties that we can adjust, so does the oscillator. We can adjust the frequency of an oscillator. We can actually change the different waveform as well. So we can use a sine wave, a square wave, a triangle, and a sawtooth wave just by changing the oscillator's type. So we do our first demo. I'm actually going to bring my microphone to my computer, so bear with me for one second. And we're going to take a look at, like, well, so what are these different waves and how does all this kind of work? Starting point. 
So then I started researching up all these algorithms, right? Like, okay, uh, I'm a liberal arts major, by the way. I should be not. I should not be touching algorithms, <laughs> right? So I'm looking up all these algorithms and different theorems, and I realized that this is a solved problem. Like we solved this centuries ago. No one needs me coming in and solving this, right? Piano is actually kind of and musical and guitars and other kind of musical instruments like that kind of split the difference, right? They try to use compromises to figure out decent in every key, but not as like naturally harmonious in any given key. Um, so there's a lot of stuff you can do. You can kind of like make a big hash table of all the keys and stuff like that. Um, but when you have some kind of use case and then you have like a cute name, you have an open source library. Uh, so I did this for you. If you want to do it yourself, go for it. Uh, but I did this for you. Uh, and basically you can basically create notes. You can pass in a given key signature or a note signature. It'll give you the frequency. It'll give you the note letter, all sorts of other stuff. It'll tell you what key on the piano it was. And what's even cooler, is if you need to shift that around. I want to go up an octave, fine. I want to go up a diminished fifth. I've got you covered, <laughs> right? It actually supports chords as well, too, so you can actually say, like, uh, octavian.chord and say, like, A minor suspended fourth. It'll do it. It'll give you, like, an iterable of notes that you can kind of use as well. So let's, what would this look like as a musical instrument? Okay, so let's check it out. This is a little app called Audiophonic.
do a little bit of mathy math to like make them to sensible values. And then I basically set an oscillator to that frequency, and I set the gain based on the height. And all of a sudden, I've got a cool party trick. <laughs> right? Whenever the face track event fires, we go ahead and um, we update the synthesizer with the new values of height and x. Right? And that's cool. But the other really cool thing about the web is the whole like connected part, right? Like the web is nice, but like, or like making stuff that you use yourself is nice, but we have the web and we can be connected. All right, so another great thing that we have in the browser is WebSockets, right? And WebSockets allow us to kind of go through and connect multiple people and send new events as they happen. So here we got a little step sequencer, right? And this is like, we've got different notes um, as the rows and different 16 beats, but I'm a programmer, so I zero indexed it, right? Um, 16 beats, and so as it steps through the 16 beats, it'll play whatever notes are currently activated, right? And when you go ahead and you activate a node, it sends a message over WebSockets to Node. <coughs> node then goes and sends that out to all the other connected clients, right? And your browser plays like this kind of composite of all of the different uh, sequences that have been put in there. So let's take it for a spin, shall we? Alright, so here we have it, right? And we could say, we give ourselves a little baseline here. If I mess up, it's because I'm kind of looking. I'm just going to check my phone while we do this. That's cool, everyone. Oh, look, I have it on my phone. And oh my god, it's so hard to Um, where music 
using the web are even more awesome when they're together. And there's a whole bunch of like, APIs that we didn't talk about, right? We didn't talk about the like, Gamepad API. That's a thing, by the way. Uh, WebRTC, we didn't talk about any of the kind of device orientation or gyroscope APIs. So the kind of the possibilities are really huge here of the different kinds of musical instruments that we could make. So I showed you this link before. Um, the kind of moral of the story is that pull requests accepted, right? If you make something really cool, it's just a markdown file. Don't, no big deal. Right? It's just a markdown file. If you make something really cool, you should open up a pull request. And you should share it. And we can all like bask in your glory together. And it'll be wonderful. Um, so thank you. Come and talk to me after this. Are we questioning? Uh, yeah. You have, want to take questions? I'll Absolutely. Take questions. Hang on. I mean, it depends on the question. <laughs> For the different oscillators, you've got the four different waves. Can you adjust the waves at all? Can you... You can actually make custom waves. You can? Can yeah. you modify like the attack and decay? Yeah. Okay. You can actually like create even your own algorithm for creating its own waveform, so you can make like sloopy, slidey ones. That's a technical term as well. Um, so you can create all custom waveforms. There's actually a bunch of built-in um, nodes as well for like manipulating that sound as well. All right. Before we take the next question, anybody else has a question? You can put your hand up so I know where I'm going next. <laughs> what a crazy idea. Um, curious about you mentioned the the gain module being able to be clipped in. Are there other kinds of modules, fuzzers, faders, flangers, whatever, or, or can you make your own? Uh, I believe you can make your own. I don't have the uh, technical skills. <laughs> like, I, I didn't actually, like, but there's a certain part that I'm kind of exploring that I don't know too much about yet, so I'm going to, like, do the hand wavy yes answer to that question, and, like, which isn't really an answer. Anybody else? 